Hi, boys and girls. Red, white, blue, and Uncle Who. Let's read another chapter. Today we're going to read about the Star Spangled Banner. So can you tell them already to celebrate? What holiday are we going to celebrate? Oh, my flags fell down. Yeah, let me pick up the flag. What holiday is coming up? Did you say the 4th of July? Right. That is to celebrate happy birthday to the United States, to America. Some people do sparklers on the 4th of July. Just be very safe if you do them. And you, you can wear funny little hats, decorate yourself, and get some red, white, or blue sunglasses. But however you celebrate, just be safe and have fun. Let's see who's out there. Samantha and Benny, hi. How was tennis yesterday? Hi, Sam and Henry. I'm hoping you're having a good time at camp. Hi, Zayra and Oliver. I see you made some slime. I wish I was there with you making slime. Hi, Iris. Hi, Hannah and Noah. Hi, Kayla. Hi, little ones. Hi, Mattia and Madeline. Zachary, Ari, and Colin. I see you went to Chick-fil-A with Grandma yesterday in the park. That looked like so much fun. I'm glad you all got, are having a good time. I have my little sign behind me, happy 4th of July. Let's learn some more today. Let's learn about the Star Spangled Banner. What do you already know about it? Okay. So, this is nonfiction. I do have some illustrations that are in black and white. And let's see what we can find out, the Star Spangled Banner. The Americans had won the Revolutionary War, but new issues soon arose between the United States and Great Britain. The War of 1812 resulted, lasting from 1812 to 1815. In August of 1814, British troops landed, marched on Washington, D.C., and burned the capital. The British soldiers returned to their ships, planning to land next along Chesapeake Bay and set up a base from which they could send troops north. At the same time, there were plans for an army from Canada to make its way south. The key was Baltimore, and the key to Baltimore lay in Chesapeake Bay, Fort McHenry. Do you know about Fort McHenry? Have you been there? That's a spot that you could go and visit in Baltimore. The commander of Fort McHenry, Fort McHenry Major George Armistead had ordered a huge flag measuring 42 feet long by 30 feet high. This he raised over the fort, saying he wanted it so big that the British will have no trouble seeing it from a distance. It was made by Mrs. Mary Young Pickersgill of Baltimore and her 13-year-old daughter. The stars measured two feet from point to point, and the stripes were two feet wide. Wow. On September 13th, 1814, Fort McHenry's flag was whipping in the breeze as the fort was attacked by 16 British ships. On the deck of a ship in Chesapeake Bay stood Francis Scott Key, a young American lawyer. Key had come aboard the HMS Tonnant with Colonel J.S. Skinner to seek the release of Dr. William Beans. You see those music notes? Remember that an elderly physician taken captive by the British. Dr. Beans was released when Key and Skinner produced evidence that the doctor had treated both British and American soldiers. During these negotiations, the Americans had learned of the British plans for invading Baltimore. Skinner, Key, and Beans were forced to wait out the battle behind en enemy lines. The first shot was fired on Fort McHenry at 6 a.m. on September 13th. The attack continued without let up. During the day, Key and his companions watched the battle. That night, Key paced the decks, observing as the battle raged, unsure which side would be victorious. What does that mean, victorious? Whisper someone next to you, what does victorious mean? Right, to win, which side would win? British ships fired 200-pound bombshells that were supposed to explode upon reaching their targets, 
Undependable, they often exploded in midair instead. By their light, and by the light of the rockets that were also being fired, Key could see the flag still flying over the fort. Is that a good sign? Mm-hmm, yes it is. It began to rain. Soon it was impossible to see anything. Key, Skinner, and Beans waited. As long as the noise continued, they knew Fort Henry had not surrendered. What does that mean, surrender? Right, had not given up. It was early morning when the noise suddenly ceased. That means stop. A heavy fog crept in. The battle must have been over, but who had won? When the sun finally rose and the fog lifted, the three men saw, to their joy, the American flag still flying over Fort McHenry. The British were retreating. Yay! The American flag was still flying. That is good news. Taking out an envelope from a letter he had started to write, Francis Scott Key tried to put down the feelings in a poem. He worked on the poem during his journey back to shore and in his hotel room that night. The next day, he took a copy of the four verses to his brother-in-law, Judge Joseph Nicholson. And we know somebody who's a poet, don't we? Uncle Jonathan, Jonathan's a poet. Judge Nicholson immediately sent it to the printer and asked that copies be distributed throughout the city. The poem, called Defense of Fort McHenry, also included instructions that it might be sung to the tune of Anna, To Anacron in Heaven, a popular song of the time. So that was a long time ago. On September 20th, the poem appeared in a Baltimore newspaper as well. The song quickly spread. Soon, everyone was singing it. In 1960, President Woodrow Wilson ordered that the Star Spangled Banner, as it had come to be known, be played at all state occasions. In 1931, after numerous petitions, the United States Congress named this song our national anthem. The original Star Spangled Banner that flew over Fort McHenry is now in the Smithsonian Institution. So boys and girls, if you go into Washington, D.C. to the Smithsonian, you can see the original. So, so that was written as a poem, and the poem was put to music. And a lot of poems are put to music, and we call those songs. Can you write a poem? Sure, of course you can. So you can talk to Jonathan, he'll give you some clues. But I'll tell you, just write down some words, write down things that were that are important to you. And then sometimes the use of repetition makes it sound good. You can have rhyming words, but you don't have to. Well, boys and girls, today, can you draw me a flag? And can you write me a poem? Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing if you wrote a poem. So if you draw me a picture, please email or text it to me. Have your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa send it to me and I will show it on YouTube and all the other kids that I say hi to can get to see what you drew or what you wrote. Well, I love reading to you. Have a great day and stay safe and enjoy the, the July 4th celebration. Love you. Bye from Mimi.